Good morning. It is Monday, October 23rd, and my name is Jason Allen. I'm a realtor and real estate planner based in Palm Springs, California. Every week, I focus on one different city that's within my market. Today is Palm Desert. I'm going to do a very brief overview of the market. And if you give me just a moment, I'm going to share my screen. And in doing that, if you're familiar with my weekly updates. I'm going to mix it up a little bit and I'm going to start with mortgage applications. Often I end with this. There's a couple of things I want to point out. One is mortgage rate mortgage rates came down slightly, but they did break 8% this week. Not good. <laughs> and as a result, you see where Applications for mortgages has gone down considerably. This 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 is uh, the fixed rate. These are applications. They have an inverse relationship. You can see the opposite when interest rates were very low uh, at two point six seven. We had really a whole bunch of applications. It's what fueled the price escalations all across the United States. On the upside. I want to quickly go over to this article. You can find all of this at Mortgage News Daily. What I do like about this particular site is they will dive a little bit deeper into some of these charts. And in this one, you can see where the overall existing home inventory across the United States is actually very low. So while we have had an instance in our recent past going into the 2000s, when home sales plunged, we had a glut of inventory. And we have the inverse of that today. And we're going to continue to have that inverse because so many people during COVID purchased their house with cash. And if their house price has gone down even a little bit, there's no reason they're going to sell unless there's some external force going on. Marriage, death, addition, that sort of thing. Job relocation. Kids need to go to a different school. Or they got super low interest rates, those interest rates of 2.67%. So we're going to continue to have low inventory. What's very likely to happen is that as time passes, there will be more people that will experience a reason to have to sell. And that'll loosen up inventory a little bit. But with low inventory and consistent demand, we, our prices remain stable. So wanted to show that to you first. I'll dive into my typical screen. So today we're focused on Palm Desert. In Palm Desert, we have fewer sales, 25% down. This is year over year. So September of 22 compared to September of 23, we have fewer sales. Median sales price is down year over year, 15%. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other charts where this gets a little muddy. Um, inventory is up, not significantly compared to our high water mark back here. Um, days on market, of course, has gone up. Things are just taking longer to sell. Sellers have adjusted their price. And this is true throughout the valley. We are seeing here where there's 97.4, for example. That is on average, sellers are getting about 97.5% of what they're asking. And that's without a price reduction. If you go to a price reduction, one or more, they're getting about 94%. Now that's kind of dials into some of this median sales price going down as well. Over here, we are seeing 22.5% of sales going at asking price or above. And it's the little bit of above that's pushing up to create this averages, these averages in here, getting into the high 90s. And those are just sellers that are offering an excellent value. Consumers are seeing that. And there might be two or three people bidding against each other. And in fact, I was recently in a bidding competition on a condo, not in Palm Desert, but rather a different city. It just was a lot of value there. Month supply of inventory, again, this goes back to the chart I just showed you. Locally, we have low inventory. What this means is that it would take about three months for all the homes in Palm Desert to sell if no new homes came on. 
Median sales price is down about 8%. That's price per square foot, excuse me. And then sold within 30 days, 33%. In 60 days, 65%. And within 90 days, 85%. So the vast majority of sellers putting their single family home on the market, it is getting sold. Let me go over to condos. Condos, unit sales are down. Median sales price is down, although very little. And this goes back to if someone has been priced out of a house and why would they be priced out of a house? Not because of the whole dollar value of the property, but their monthly payment has increased based on interest rates. They may choose to go from a house to a condo. So while unit sales are down, median sales price is up. So there's more buyers in that marketplace. And I'm going to show you a different chart that helps us gauge some of that. Inventory is essentially unchanged. Days on market, about a month and a half. Sales to list price, 90, 97%, we'll call it. And then if they've had one price reduction, about 95%. 24% are going at or above asking less than three months if we were to sell all the inventory we had. That's not a lot. A balanced market for most agents is six months. Median sales price is down 7%. 48% sell within the first 30 days. Again, this speaks to buyers going after condos. 76 within the first 60, 88 within the first 90. Now, there's this chart from my good friends over at Chicago Title. And this little barometer, we'll call it, has a has is in the seller's area. Now, that is based in part on low inventory despite the fact that there are fewer buyers and a couple of other things. Now, in this chart, I, I often will come down here. I will click it, mark it segments. I pause for a moment. You're welcome to pause your screen and study this a bit more. Consistently, I'm just pointing out that as you get into the top quartile, the more expensive homes, it's been a rockier ride. <laughs> Those have taken the biggest price hits. The next quartile took the next biggest hit. But at this point, if you look right in here, bottom three quartiles, they're all just sort of humming along. Small price adjustments here and there, but they're doing okay. This chart, I find fascinating. And I don't often, I have, I have this whole list of charts I can use. I don't often go into all of them, but let me just take a look at this one. All right, we're in Palm Desert. We're talking about single family homes here. And what this does, if you look at these numbers along here, they call this a heat index. And essentially, the higher the number, the better position the seller is in. And the inverse is true. The lower the number, the worse the seller is in. Um, and then flip that and just look at what it would be for a buyer. So buyers looking at condos, uh, excuse me, single family homes under $300,000. There's almost none. I only there's been one for years, but you get that they would have 100% sellers would have 100% leverage because there's so few. And you go up. Now we do have, maybe let's say we get up to the 450 mark. Sellers have about a 56%, we'll call it leverage perspective. What's important to understand is that if you are a buyer or a seller, you want to be sensitive to this if you're on the cusp. So for example, if you have a house that's, that's worth a million to a million point two five, a million and a quarter, you've got a 40% heat index according to this chart. But let's say you really your house is really like a million 50. You would be better off coming on the market at 999 because here you see where your, your, your heat index increases by 20% or more. And so you'd have a better leverage over your consumer and it may push you to that higher price or it may simply get your house sold quicker, or it may get sold with fewer complications, a cleaner offer. Because remember, when you submit an offer or when you receive an offer, it's not just price 
that the buyer and you negotiate on. It can be timing. It can be contents of the property. It can be who pays for different reports, who pays for various repairs. There's a lot that goes into it. And you can look at that sort of up and down the chart. Now let's go over to condos. And so if you're a buyer, let's say, and you're looking at that same price point, or you're looking at a million five to a million two, you may want to focus instead on a condo that's a million four because you got more leverage. It's the opposite of this 41. Um, or anywhere on this chart, you know, you come down into the lower price points, 350 to 400. If you can be, if, if you have a desire to buy a 400,000 or a three, a $300,000 condo, but you can actually go up to three and a quarter, you've just increased your leverage. All right. I, I may have belabored that point a bit too much. I apologize. Um, but you get the idea where strategy becomes so crucial. I'll end with saying that as a seller, you are confronting certain challenges in the marketplace. If you can wait, great. If you cannot wait, my advice is to be presenting the best possible property you can. In other words, if it requires some painting inside, if you need to move old furniture out, declutter, if you can actually be gone for a month so it can be shown at any time during the day, all of these things are going to position your property in, in a better light compared to whatever else is on the market. And if you're a buyer, don't be lulled into thinking that prices are just going to keep going down and you're going to get a better house tomorrow. Or if I miss this one, I'll get another one tomorrow. That, that can get you into a trap where you actually miss a great house. Have your list of criteria and then focus on that as you're out shopping. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks very much. Have a great week.